<clears throat> okay. Well, hello everyone. This is Dato Forest, and welcome back to my live stream. Today we will continue to uh, explore the world of Final Fantasy XIV, and this time we will try to understand of what happened in uh, the ancient Aromatine. Sorry. Ancient Amora. 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 I think it's Amora. <laughs> to uh, Elizabeth. I mean, yeah, from Elizabeth. He is the one who got stuck in the uh, crystal tower that he uh, had. Well, that not exactly, but linger in between the world of living and the world of dead. Pretty much that. <laughs> okay, so uh, last time that I got disconnected in the middle of the stream which is I uh, were around here so this time this time I just continue up, uh, what I left up and yes I kind of stopped right at that time as well so since first thing is been a while And second, I don't want to start another stream on the same day until we just continue a bit. But it's kind of creating like more problem with the uh, the video link on YouTube. So yeah, not going to do it. <laughs> So it's living, I mean, it's letting to, I may have like more than 10 video for Ann Walker, but we'll see. Oh yeah, the CD Equestrium, I forgot the name of this. Well, time for breaking some news. <laughs> Oh yes, it's still linked to uh, Hardling. 
So, probably that. Probably that's why I feel uneasy. Too slippery today for some weird reason. So may you may hear me while yawning sometime. Probably a lot. <laughs> oh what? Oh. oh just the white may doing the white may stuff. <laughs> between two worlds while in the sword like one day could be like a month or even years in the first uh. but it doesn't seem to be age <laughs> at all and a lot and I mean tons of things happen and it's not just one day it's probably months Oh well, the magic of game character that did not age. <laughs> this may come as a surprise, but well. Yeah, these kids have not grow even an inch. <laughs>
How does he know? Oh yes, he had the ability to move between worlds. And strange not even grow an ink either. She's the main character. Well, at least for main character. So she grow a little bit. Uh well. To tell her about how causing the final days. Uh, well.
Authentication complete. Please state your business. Acknowledged. Reinitializing Circus Tower systems. Searching for Elidibus entity. Subterranean core power accumulator. Projecting image. My home. My friends. No more than a dream. those places beyond all Lord Zodiac. You must explain all. So, he is fallen, and my brethren's souls returned to the star. The doom we sacrificed so much to prevent is come again. Old burdens now yours to bear. But if this is Van Daniel's design, then I, as Elidibus, have a duty to fulfill. Your unsolicited act has restored to me some few memories of the Convocation. Such knowledge as I have, I will share. I do this not for you. I merely perform my duty, as I have ever done. Where to begin? Ah, the end. Your understanding of what caused the final days is consistent with our own. The decay first took root where the currents were weakest. Yes. A conclusion drawn by him, Fan Daniel. Not the him of here and now, but as I knew him, long, long ago. Having shed light upon the phenomenon, he dedicated himself to devising a countermeasure. Really? Were it not for his knowledge of the celestial, we would never have made the connection, and thence forestalled the final days. And though he inherited that noble soul, how different this last incarnation. 
so consumed by self-loathing and hate. Alpis. Yes, the name is familiar to me. Yet I know it not as a flower, but a place. A testing facility for determining which of our creations were fit to be released into the world. Many worked there, and before joining the Convocation and assuming the title of Fan Daniel, he was their chief. He was Hermes. What? Really? Why are they taking the name of the Greek god? <laughs> that is all I know. The crystals tell little of the lives the 14 led prior to their induction. Elpis itself would tell even less. An area ruin has survived. Wait. I saw you there. In Elpis. Wait, what? How? <laughs> no. I did not. But I did. I did. A lingering trace of impossibility. Oh, maybe that's the reason why a lot of the ancient Aramatine kind of recognize me in Saddlebringer. Like someone that familiar. Maybe. 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 Or maybe and the I'm truth in time. It fills my heart. Am I going to travel back in time? Really? My memories remain clouded, I fear. However, they have revealed to me one possible course. You must travel to Elpis, to the time when Hermes served as its chief. So that's when I travel back in time. Interesting. <laughs> in glimpsing the Exarch's memories, not only did I make his summoning magic mine own, I also mastered the workings of this tower, which, having absorbed my empowered essence, now harbors an abundance of energy. As such, I believe I can deliver you unto the past, unto that place and that precise moment. I see, so just like Crystal Exact or Rahatia, he travel back in the past. And back, I mean back to the past and go to another world or ring. Pretty much go to the first from the source. Interesting. Very interesting. Ooh. Given the eons that must be traversed, the gateway will not be fully formed. Wait. Your form will be less tangible still than those warriors of light I had summoned. Does it mean I was stuck in the past? In all likelihood, none will be able to see or hear you. Yet even should you manage to interact with others, you will be unable to affect meaningful change. For the reality you wish to save, the reality to which you must return, exists as a result of the final days. You cannot reshape the past to undo the tragedies of the present. Cannot unmake the sorrow and suffering fated to come. We'll see about that. In full knowledge of this, will you still entrust your life to your foe and make the journey? Oh, 
Why not? <laughs> Very well. I shall cast you unto the river of time. Let this be my final act. You must input the commands. I no longer have the authority. First, you must reconfigure the systems, that the tower's ether may be channeled for the magic. The preparations are complete. The gateway will soon open. Return at once to the ocular. All appears to be in order. The ether flows unimpeded. The magic should consume every last moat of my essence. Why are you surprised? Did I not say that this will be my final act? Lord Zodiac is no more. There is nothing for me here. The ones I love and long to see again are waiting in that promised land beyond memory and dream. Now go, warrior of light. Go, and do not look back. Well, Hydaelyn, I take my leave of you. Yours is the mantle of the last of us. May you have the joy of it, the burden and the solitude. It falls to you now, you and your champion, to save our star. So I guess the pass is also another map that why the map only sold like four places, which is missing two places, I mean two zones, that normally they have like six zones, so the other two zones are pretty much in the pass, so I have to go back to the pass, huh? interesting, very interesting. Wow, they are tall, really tall, <laughs> really big, like giant. So that's the reason why uh, the um, the rabbit on the moon say that I'm a like baby carrot. <laughs> Wow, that, wow, they are really a giant.
Ah, so not everyone wearing mask in the... Well, she have the mask, but she's not wearing it. She just like, have it hanging. Okay. Okay. <laughs> well, everyone just attained a tune, not exactly able to tune. Interesting. Here we are, Elpis. That's so well, like... well, how rare to receive you in person. To what do we owe the honor? That sound like Elpis Sec or Haiti. Oh, just a few odd tasks. No. We'll be here a while. No, no. Maybe. Or someone else. You're welcome to stay as long as you see fit, of course. As a matter of procedure, however, I must ask that you kindly remove your masks. Come now. Is this truly necessary? Surely you can tell who we are. That's his Elvis sake. <laughs> who you are, perhaps. But I am far less infamous. Regardless, if we do not follow protocol, it is our hosts who would be held accountable. So, please, do favor us with your handsome face. <laughs> <sighs> yes, that is Haiti. Our Elmer's sick. Which is the rank? Wait, wait, what? Wait. Isn't this... Heidelin? Satisfied? I thought Heidelin is the girl. Your cooperation. <laughs> you are free to go about your business. And that's why he's pretty much the guy. <laughs> and that face does look like a girl. I mean, does look like a female. I'm stunned. <laughs> You see it too, yes? Oh. Oh, 
I haven't the foggiest what you're talking about. Hmm. That's odd. It's right here. A bit thin in the ether, but there's no mistaking it. The color of its soul is almost identical to Azem's. Huh. Do you suppose he created it? Rather unusual for a familiar to have a soul, though. Don't ask me. All I know is that it's trouble. Doubly so if it's his spitting image. So let's leave it be. Come now. Hmm, it's trying to say something, but it's literally too intangible to form words. Why don't you give it some ether? Spare a snifter of your bounteous reserves. <laughs> Who do you take me for? Why, a dear friend, of course. One who wouldn't let acts of kindness, such as my accompanying him on errands to far-flung outposts, go unrewarded? <sighs> I suggest you close your eyes, or this may be unpleasant. You may open your eyes. Huh. Now I'm a toy. They are. <laughs> oh. You even adjusted its size. <laughs> the better to indulge your whim. This way, it will be easier to communicate. How very thoughtful of you. And may I applaud your artful reinforcement. Without further ado then. Greetings. I am Hithlidaeus, chief of the Bureau of the Architect. Oh, he did lay it. Yeah. But not exactly Heidelin. Or was he? Well, Heidelin was originally named Venet or Venon or something like that. Okay, this is confusing. <laughs> Sulking beside me is the most honorable Emmet Selk of the Convocation of Fourteen. And how might we address you, my new friend? Fine name, and I'm pleased to see you understand our words. So tell us, whence have you come? The thinness of your essence suggests you weren't created here. You do not know? Or cannot say? Hmm. Allow me to ask a different question then. What brings you here? Maybe... Well... Well now, the same as us. Perhaps Azim wished to come too, but had to settle for a familiar. If he truly wished to be here, 
than he would be. Right you are. My apologies if we've given offense. The two of us can discern the color of souls, you see, and yours happens to resemble that of a friend. And with your purpose matching our own besides, we jumped to a hasty conclusion. We are here to speak with Hermes, the chief overseer of this facility, which we also intend to tour in order to gain greater insight into the man's work. We, I say, though this is Emmett Selk's charge. I am here only to serve as his guide. And I should be happy to serve as yours as well, by way of an apology for the misunderstanding. Wait, are you suggesting that we bring it along on official business? This thing we know next to nothing about? If you harbor suspicions, better to keep it close than leave it to its own devices. Wouldn't you agree? Well, Amazix is quite... ...susty. <laughs> Besides, having a mysterious life form in tow is the norm rather than the exception here. Welcome, my friends, to the testing ground of creation at Heaven's Edge, Elpis. The world unsunder. Huh, interesting. Oh, so that's the Venice. This presence. Secrets are you hiding, I wonder? So these are the normal tree, and currently I'm a big a tree. <laughs> Interesting. But these are not the normal boosts. <laughs> they are way too big. <laughs> As well, these grasses. I mean, grass. And flower bed. They're way too big. So this is really another map. Ah. Oh, the 
Sunders and Sunder. Pretty much in the first. Interesting. And this is a source of star. So, is bar This is only one map and a city. This bar is like two map, I mean two zone and a city, which is pretty much a standard. Then the sea of star. Yeah, that's is four zone. And now the first is the words and see. Unsunder. So only five zone. Okay. So this was pretty much like floating in the uh, mid air. Well, saying mid air is more likely really, really high up in the heaven or the sky. Well, um, Elmis Shag, I mean Elmis Shag, this mentioned about this is the heaven. Facility, I mean, having resource facilities, yeah, I guess. I'll be so. So this creature is probably extremely healed.
So I need to wear the clothes. Probably just only using this when doing the event. I guess. That's a unicorn. A giant unicorn or horse. It's got it's got dread. So... So... What would be the final area? I 
outer space? <laughs> Maybe? Or the end of the universe? <laughs> Who knows? Since Ori in the heaven, well, not heaven. Well, the facility, the heaven wishes facility. Well, at least that I'll be self say about it. I mean, call it. So, on the ancient monster, they are extremely big, like huge. Well, these trees seem to be have the normal size, but the type of that tree seems to be like really, really big. But ah, uh, oh well. Well, the size start to get really weird. It's like they just making normal size. <laughs> yep, here they just seem to be everything in normal size. So this is pretty much like the home for the people to stay and research in this area well let me say about research facility and the resident for people who research here Twelve wonder. Huh. Is really twelve? Oh, what's up there? One, two, three, four, five. No, it's not twelve. Not even six. <laughs> Oh, there's the uh, ether current.
Well, for some reason, this place looked like a garden rather than a research facility. <laughs> Yeah, it's the look like a garden. No west. Maybe up here. What is that? Wait, this is the right the teleportation device from uh Ozone. Oh, uh, maybe that. I mean, from the Zod in Heaven World. So maybe, yeah, uh, that's how I get up there by using the uh, teleportation device. Oh, wow. A lot of Ixion. 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 Well, Thunderhead Kerganos? That's a weird name. Oh, that one looked like a hippogriff from World War Crap. <laughs> Interesting. Oh, so this is the uh, research facility. I sort of to, to do the uh, ether ride as well. Supposed to be the boss <laughs> in the old dungeon. That's a small <laughs> Parasus. But it's really small. I think that's a normal size Parasus. <laughs> yeah, it's supposed to be a normal size Parasus, but because we are too big, so. A baby walk in this, no, it's too small.
you are... for close collaborators. On this blessed occasion, I bring not only myself, but others who long to speak with you. You are of the Convocation. Emmet Selk at your service. Do I have the honor of addressing Hermes, Chief Overseer of Elpis? You do. You have traveled far for it. Given your facility's purpose, its remote location is something of a necessity. Would that I didn't have to rely upon a guide. Oh, you wound me. Have I not ever been an attentive and helpful friend? But moving along to more agreeable company, this one we chance to... Well, you certainly have her attention. Is she one of yours, Hermes? Her name is Meteon. It means shooting star. Like Meteor? <laughs> hmm. If I may make an observation, her ether is terribly thin. I fear she might dissipate at any moment. Nor do I believe you've made a submission to the Bureau. I would remember such a concept if you had. I haven't, as you say. I judged it too early. She's a pet project of mine, still undergoing preliminary testing. So... But rest assured that I will attend in person ere long. So, how are we supposed to become Fan Daniel and... His voice is totally different. And his... Personality as well. Very different. Very well. Being an authority on flying life forms, I appreciate that you are exacting in your work. I shall look forward to your submission. If we have finished with the perfunctory chit chat, I would discuss official matters. By my coming, I trust you already anticipate the subject. I have an inkling, yes. Please wait to the main building yonder. I shall join you as soon as I've returned these creatures to their homes. What's wrong, Hermes? And their stoma is missing.
Hmm. I may have found it. A creature with the self-same ether as those there, nestled in the boughs of a tree outside the grounds. You're saying they can climb with their sorry excuses for limbs? The fashion has been to imbue aquatic creatures with the power of flight, ever since the words of Mitron created a sky-swimming fish. Sky-swimming fish? So this is pretty much like when pig fly. <laughs> Wait, will there, will there be flying pig? <laughs> The Amistomas too can fly, if only slightly, and they could conceivably climb a tree. Whether they can come down safely, however... Excuse me. I'll help! Two! And what are we supposed to do with this lot? <laughs> May I suggest we split up? If you would be so good as to assist Hermes, Emmett Selk and I shall keep an eye on these adorable creations in the meantime. They look like Salamander in real life. Salamander! Aquatic creature. Wait, salamander is not aquatic creature. They well, it's, it's pretty much an aquatic creature, but more likely amphibian. <laughs> so that ah, uh, I see.
by the way, this map got quite a lot of flora and fauna. Although it's not a forest or it's more like a garden, but the amount of ground grass quite a lot. Although it's not exactly high quality grass. Keeper, or maybe something else that's not exactly a chocobo. <laughs> or gemstone. Facility could be research facility as well. Ah. Interesting. This appears to be the place. And here is where we part ways. We will be discussing highly sensitive affairs. Only a select few may be privy to such knowledge, and that does not include someone who cannot or will not divulge their origins. Will I have to remove you by force? Yes, I'm sure your business with Hermes is quite pressing. You may speak with him to your heart's content after ours is concluded. I do not object to his attendance. Hermes, this is highly irregular. Perhaps, but I believe he can be trusted. Meteon would not have taken to him so quickly otherwise. Moreover, the presence of a third party may help me to maintain composure. As you wish, then. Behave yourself, do you hear? Well, the future album is so a lot more likable. <laughs> Finally happened then. I, Van Daniels, declared his intention to step down and named you as his preferred successor. Ah. In recognition of your knowledge and your works, the convocation is giving the recommendation due consideration. As one who does not know you personally, 
I am to use my impartial eye to take your measure. And above all else, to ascertain your disposition towards the invitation. I understand that you and Fan Daniel are close. He himself was once chief overseer of Elpis, after all. I should not be surprised if you knew before anyone else that he wished to relinquish his office. I did. He told me that when he fulfilled his purpose, he wished to pass the torch to me. A torch you seem none too pleased to accept. Are you so averse to serving on the convocation? No, it's not that. For a humble researcher like myself to even be considered is an honor beyond words. No. What troubles me, what I struggle to come to terms with, is the very fact that Van Daniel is stepping down. Does this not mean that he will return to the star? So something happened to the old Van Daniel. Of his own volition, yes, like so many others have before him. Return to the star? Does that mean die? Well now, that's not a word I hear often. Is that what you say here in Elpis? Mankind is the life of Atheris. Each of us, a drop of blood flowing through its veins, bearing sustenance. In our finite time upon it, tis our duty to make it a better place, that all who call it home, now and in future, may abide in happiness. To that end, we have dedicated ourselves to the pursuit of enlightened creation, and by our efforts did we transform this once untamed wilderness into the peaceful paradise you enjoy today. To return to the star whence we came is a privilege afforded to we who have so loved and nurtured it. A choice embraced by those who have lived their lives to the fullest, in service to our world. And when they depart upon this journey, it is beautiful, always. The Fourteen are no exception. Tis believed no occasion is more felicitous than the fulfillment of one's duty. Our office becomes our lives, and to retire is to return, or so the majority of us hold. Some few have elected to eschew custom. Mayhap you feel Fan Daniel's deeds do not warrant his return. Yet you should know his accomplishments as well as any. During his time, he conceived of countless outstanding concepts. And channeling the wealth of experience he attained here in Elpis, he brought forth many new specimens. I know of all this. I do. It's just... I cannot fathom why someone so great and wise who could still do so much good, would want to end it all. Oh no, I've made her upset. Forgive me. I know I requested your presence. Might I trouble you to take me to your outside? A change of scenery would do her good.
So the contents of mankind back in the ancient past. So that doesn't mean we are like a sinking version of the old mankind. <laughs> Ah, oh, my Jokolo is gone. Oh, see, just the my birthday as well. <laughs> Is a secret. <laughs> wow, she can still read my emotions, so fighting. The bar just turned to us.
Wow, a lot of people running around. I guess they uh, try to hunt for boss. Yeah, look like it. So more quests appear here, but there is no quest that give me the ether card yet. There's still five ether card from the quest. Why I keep running when I can't just mount up?
205 and then 202. 202. Yeah, Jeremy North. Northwest. Hmm, to the west. Interesting. Well, I will go this way first to get the um, the current. Oh, there, there, see. Probably up here, but cannot get up there yet.
Interesting play. Interesting play. Amazing, is it not? The Ampelos, one of our newest subjects. So, how are we coming along? That's the Elpis flower. This place is Elpis. Those flowers, Elpis. Entelechies, like me. They are a product of Elpis, and so named for their birthplace. A happy accident, born of the hands of a former researcher who loved beautiful blossoms. Unique for how they change color, to reflect the emotional state of those nearby. Though be it here or elsewhere, they are seldom seen in any hue save purest white. Reflect the emotional state, you say? By what means do they achieve this? In creation, there exists an energy wholly apart from ether, one driven by emotions. Oh, so that's the Akasak. Well, not sure if they call it in the ancient time. In like manner to how we manipulate ether, this flower is subject to the influence of said energy. While it has no will of its own, it is sensitive to the prevailing emotion in the vicinity, and reacts by altering its color and vibrancy. Akasha? Akasha? It is one of the unseen energies defined by Hanish alchemical theory. Though a gross oversimplification, some describe it as an essence influenced by feeling. Akasha, though I'm not familiar with the term, your description suggests it is the self-same energy. Dynamis, we call it. Dynamis? <laughs> and those entities like the Alpus flower, that have the ability to interact with this energy, converting emotions into tangible phenomena, are Antelechis. That you are, my dear. And no ordinary one at that. But the first, possessed of free will. Wait. A form of energy other than ether? Dynamis? I've never heard of such a thing. Hardly surprising. Dynamis cannot be seen, much less felt. And though its existence has long been theorized, we had no proof until the flower's serendipitous creation. What's more, Dynamis is far weaker than ether. Under normal circumstances, its effects are drowned out by the latter. 
on account of which beings comprised of and reliant upon the ether, like you and I, are unable to make practical use of dynamis. Tis a truly esoteric thing, known to but a select few scholars. Intriguing. Then, given the limitations you described, why create Meteon? Our star, Etheris, is especially rich in ether, so much so that its name is derived from it. Oh, I see. However, Etherite. when we consider Etherite. all energy in existence here and in the vast space beyond, Dynamis may account for as much as 68.3%. Wait, what? more abundant form by far were we able to control it we could open the door to limitless possibilities tis not unlike a gently flowing stream unable to break through the dam of ether barring its path but if we could imbue the stream with the vigor of a raging river Not that I have such grand ambitions. Wait a second. Dynamis with ether imbue, and there's more than 62% of that energy compared with ether. Wait a second. I may have this. Answer. Nay, I merely wish to create a being that could traverse the great expanse. The relative scarcity of ether beyond the bounds of this star was a concern, and so I looked to another source of energy by necessity. That being Dynamis. No wonder her ether is so thin. Precisely. Yours is thin too. Like an Entelechy. Like me. So... Are we the same? Entelechies. That sounds more akin to the desperate flailings of a wild beast when facing imminent death. A deficit of ether alone does not an Entelechy make. It would, however, make it easier for you to interact with Dynamis. And limited though its influence may be, this quality could prove the difference between victory and defeat. You'd do well not to underestimate it. Oh dear, I'd forgotten about the poor fellow. You must excuse me a moment while I go and verify a few more things. So, my theory that the aromatine will make up ether while the modern man of uh, Eosia will make up dynamis, which is why their ether turn to different when the final day come. Well, well it's just my theory or how I said it. <laughs>
Oh, I don't know. Maybe the human, I mean the modern human or the future human, make up both dynamics or Agasar and Ether. With the uh, corporal and incorporeal form. I think. Oh, I'm way too much in my head. <laughs> Probably I'm way too much in my head. I mean, I have way too much thing in my head.
one, two, three, four, five. Five more. Hey, MSO, I have a thing with you ass. <laughs> How about that? No, there's not. Wait. Ah, to add a cell. Just spell some. Yes. <laughs> Didn't see that. <laughs> I mean, didn't see the letter L for that. I type plenty. Oh, no, no, no. You are not foisting this nonsense on me. I'm given to understand you have the power to help the Charybdis and should be quite willing to do so. And so I appeal to your better nature, most benevolent Emmet Selk. Please teach her to fly. Or else Hermes will transform. Right now. Now, now, there's no need to go quite that far. Altruism is its own reward, as I'm sure he would agree. Oh, would he now? And who contrived to put me in this position, pray tell? Nothing so devious. I merely suggested a possible course of action. Please, Emmet Sulk! Please! Oh. Oh, I did not come all this way to play nursemaid to your creations. I thank you to remember this favor and let it be the last. I will aid it once it has taken to the air. It falls to you to shepherd it skyward. Let's relax and enjoy the spectacle, shall we? So, I must have just summoned a mouse. <laughs> a flying one. You were wondering why Emmett Selk joined the convocation. Truth be told, he wasn't the first choice for the office. I was on the strength of my ability to see Ether. But I declined the offer. For though my vision is exceptional, I am pedestrian in all other aspects. Worse even, quite abysmal when it comes to manipulating Ether, for example. 
couldn't transform even if I had a mind to do so. What good is the ability to perceive a problem if one cannot act to address it? Emmett Selk has no such shortcomings. He excels in vision and manipulation both, the latter to an extraordinary degree. If there is a mage more powerful, I do not know of them. Thus did I recommend him for the office in my stead. And I wasn't the only one, far from it. Countless others vouched for his skill and character. People the world over, to whom he had previously lent a helping hand. <laughs> oh, how surprised he was. Claimed he hadn't done anything remarkable for anyone. Modest to a fault. Interesting. He deserved every bit of acclaim he received. Yet he may well have gone unappreciated were it not for a mutual friend. A singular soul who can't help but involve himself in the business of others. Where he walks, excitement is certain to follow. His antics irritate Emmett Selk to no end. But much of his grumbling stems from genuine concern. <laughs> Gumbling. <laughs> Sosty. When our friend calls, he never fails to answer and lend his talents. And in the course of doing so, he himself came to be recognized and respected by those around him. Huh. They are truly remarkable individuals, and I'm proud to call them friends. To help them realize their dreams, this will be my greatest contribution to our world. And when they have fulfilled their respective purposes, so too shall I have fulfilled mine. And together we may return to the star. Look at me, spilling my innermost secrets. I can't seem to help it with you. I can only assume it is due to the color of your soul. I just don't understand how you can be so alike and yet so different. <laughs> well done, my pet. Well done! <sighs> ah, yes. I dare say the Charybdis will be fine here on. Why don't you go and signal to Emmett Selk? Let him know that his arduous task is at an end.
Looks like we got you the 12 wonder. Well, but first I need to take my brick and I'll return later. Also, I need some more water, hot water for my tea, and probably need to take a bath. I mean, take a number two bathroom. <laughs> so, hopefully, I will be back in like 30 minutes. So, hopefully. We'll be back early. We'll see you later. Okay, I'm back. Well, let's continue. Also, uh, through my break, I think I did overlook about Medion. First is a character that has unique design, not the same with any random NPC, and then she kind of, well, have voice acting, and she's kind of an arcade construction that have the um, ability to connect with the Dynamis or Akasa. So, if, if it's play out like my uh, fanfic, she could be very well the key to uh, sell the world from the brink of destruction by absorbing on the negative emotion but because negative emotion also have I mean the Akasa also have the energy which is kind of a bad really really bad energy it could very well turn her into some kind of hideous creature <laughs> Oh wow, that means he could be the final boss. And I did not read the... Oh well. <laughs> well, well, just let it go. I did not read the quest text. <laughs> but sometimes the quest text is kind of boring as well, so who cares? <laughs> No, I did not miss anything. Interesting question. This one had a face and the body look 
almost the same with the last boss from Parasite Eve. Interesting. So they still thinking that I'm uh, Azam familiar or thinking that I'm Azam. Uh. It could be. I am Azam. I mean, my character is actually Azam. Azim or Azam. Uh, uh, don't know how to say it correctly. <laughs> Reincarnations <laughs> in the future. Exactly, Azim or Azim. I still don't know. A mystery person, I guess.
Yeah, I don't have time to fight with it. Mm -hmm. But seem like Azum to be a very important person in the uh, ancient society, I guess, or Amoratin.
I say that's a word, really. I mean, I have to type that word, so. Oh well.
Oh! <laughs> That's flower? <laughs> Tell me. Hey, create that mumbro. Really? Why? Why this one? Oh dear. A mumbo. Why? Well, anyone who play Final Fantasy Siri will know the horror of mumbo will be. I mean, like why? <laughs> <laughs> I would rather not go This is Alpis. Wait, Hermit to Hermit is turn black?
Wait, if her mid flower turn black or dark, he have been hiding his negative emotion. That could also mean he could turn into a boss. Interesting. for me. you too if you would follow me so that's why right. wait i want to show you something first so that's the reason why hermit's voice is so dark and gloomy ah interesting Elpis flowers? Go on. Ah. You're not the only one, Hermes. Others feel sad too. You're not alone. I see Mision has shared much with you. So he finally saw his fate. Wait. May we talk a moment. What is totally different from Vandania. I mean the Vandania that we know. <laughs> well, probably. I think it wrong that we live for the star, that we strive to make it a better place. And yet, in carrying out my duties here, there are times when I am plagued by doubt. Do you recall what Hithlidea said when we first spoke of my nomination? Death is the privilege of those who have fulfilled their purpose, a choice they embrace of their own free will, and when they depart, it is always beautiful. Perhaps it is. But only for man. Creations that he deems useless are discarded with nary a second thought. Some scarcely born into the world, afforded a handful of breaths before life and potential are abruptly extinguished. We make an effort to spare them the pain. They sense what awaits. Rage and anguish and cower and fear. And it is not beautiful. 
Yet no one cares. No one. So fixated are we upon the duty that we do not pause to question the method. Pain and suffering, confusion and despair, writ plain in the eyes of those poor creatures. Yet no one sees. We turn a blind eye and carry on in blissful ignorance. Not amiss. And always, always the blossoms shine pure and white. A contradiction so blatant I could scream, want to scream. How can you all accept this aberration? Then I wonder, am I the aberration for thinking thus? And I am filled with dread. But now I know I'm not alone. Not the only one for whom the flowers weep. Owen asked what you thought as he kneeled beside the Alpis. Or if you only did it at Mithion's insistence. Nevertheless, I thank you. To know that you too have experienced suffering is a comfort. Weird. <laughs> Endeavor to be strong like you. The stars in the heavens. Know you what they are? Though it is too far to tell, each glittering light could be a world not unlike Aetheris, a world filled with life. So many stars, so many lives. For us, there may be no higher purpose than to live for our world. But what of the other living beings out there? What is it that gives their lives meaning? That drives them day after day after day? To pose that question to our undiscovered cousins, I created beings of dynamis, who can traverse the vast emptiness between the stars. Meteon and her sisters. Wait, so we and have a sister? I, sisters. She has a great many of them. And they have already departed on their journey. Oh, traveling to one star and then the next in search of life. As one might expect, exploration on such a grand scale is rife with difficulties. And thus far, I've naught to show for it. But I have faith that we will make some manner of discovery ere long. And when we do, I should be glad to share our findings with you, in gratitude for your kindness. It's getting rather late. We had best find our beds. It would not do for both of us to be sleep-deprived on the morrow. Come, Meteon. Let us head back. Something up there? Could be. Probably. Maybe. I don't know.
before going, I need to finish the uh, fixture unlock quest here. Wait, it is a cat? Oh, is it a cat? A flying cat! <laughs> Okay, looks like I have to fight them. <laughs> really? A bear a pair of wings? <laughs> what do you think? Wait a 
second they look like They look like Fenrir. I mean, Final Fantasy version of Fenrir. I don't see anything up there. <laughs> well, because of the sky have way too much of thought. So this is what a fire wolf that have the ability to fly. Why do you create such a thing? His staff? That's exactly the same with Hermes' staff from uh, huh. Greek mythology. <laughs> forgive me. Please forgive me. May you and your kin find peace. 
wherever your souls may drift in the underworld. May you find tranquil seas. Be not forgotten, in concept endure, to reclaim form and one day live again. Serve not the star, or any purpose save your own. Live again, if that be your desire. that be your want, we are worthy, but leave your suffering behind, lay down your burdens, be born anew, fly high, fly free. Join the convocation, Hermes. You do not belong here. Leave to replace another. To be replaced. It changes nothing. Tell me, do you think it right that we sacrifice all these lives for the sake of the star? And when the star has reached perfection, what then? If all who are satisfied choose to die, shall we all die in satisfaction? I do not know. Were I to take up the seat of Van Daniel, it would be tantamount to approving my predecessor's death. I do not know if it is right and to be torn by such thoughts. I do not know if I am fit to represent mankind. Hermes! Please don't be angry. It hurts so. Forgive me. If you would still consider me in spite of everything, I beg some time to gather my thoughts. Meanwhile, Hithlidaeus, I fear I must trouble you to attend to the others. Tis no trouble at all. Take as long as you require. And you, my friend. I pray you find that which you seek. I expect we have some few matters to discuss. Shall we return to the Twelve Wonders for a time? Aye.
my researcher. Huh. No, it's not the uh, Chocobo Porter. Maybe there is no Porter in here. This is level 87, whereas normally at level 86 or 87 there will be a um, trial fighting the uh, primal boss or more. Well, the last time were Fly Warden. So this is uh, pretty much the teleporter or transporter. I think it's a teleporter. Yeah, it's a teleporter. I present to you Calamelios Zephyros. Here you will find a number of testing facilities, as well as the observation hub of Poiton Oikos. Right then. Let's begin by... Hmm. Well, well. An Arrayus. How delightful. <laughs> and what, pray tell, is that? Ah, that's a new species of shark. We approved the concept but a few days ago. Sharks are among the most popular sea creatures. Rare is the day when someone does not submit a new concept. At first, they were largely orthodox. Consideration given to such things as size and environmental impact. And then, a whimsical someone thought to bestow it with flight. Another, superior intelligence. And then the floodgates burst. Concepts with multiple heads, or arms, or legs, or arms and legs, and so on and so forth. It was getting absurd. A part of me wanted to tell them to go away and find something else to create. But in the end, I couldn't deny their passion. And <sighs> here we are. Hagelin, or that was too close. Before becoming, are you unharmed? Hagelin, which is uh, venom, or something like that. <laughs> well, now, 
if it isn't a pair of familiar faces. Banar, that we Banar. should be in here. That's his hideland. <laughs> As I mentioned earlier, the better part of the convocation holds that when we retire is when we return to the star. Well, she is not among said majority. Even after stepping down, she carries on with her work. Vinar is her name, and she is the previous Azim. Oh! <laughs> oh, so ah, interesting. So, so Hadelin is Azam. Well, previous Azam. And huh. it has been a while, Hithlidaeus. You look well. Less so, Emmet Selk. I dare say the lines upon your brow have both deepened and doubled in number. A shame for one so young. You must make an effort to frown less often. <laughs> Easier said than done, thanks to your unruly successor. How is he, if I may ask? Incorrigible as ever. Rushed headlong into a volcano on the brink of eruption just the other day. I should be glad to share the tale in its entirety later, if you're so inclined. Ha! Oh, you know I am. Now then, you are? come from the future. What? She knew? I do not believe we have ever met, yet I sense my magic upon you. Therefore, if I wove the enchantment, I could only have done so at a later point in time. Hmm. What manner of magic is this, if I may ask? A traveler's ward, of course. It prevents the corruption of one's ether. So that is the actual magic traveler ward, but later being known as e Echo. They probably don't know about Primal. I see you are not ignorant to its presence. And while there are many protective spells, the one you bear is unmistakably mine. Hold on. From the future? That's absurd. What is it? Are you unable to speak of the matter? The reality to which you must return exists as a result of the final days. You cannot reshape the past to undo the tragedies of the present. 
Oh yeah. Wait, does this mean I undo the past? So that the present no longer have the final day? <laughs> Maybe? I don't know. So, your actions here will not change your history, but they may yet affect the course of ours. How very exciting! I'm quite fond of delving into the unknown, and there's naught more unknown than the future. Until a moment finally arrives, we cannot know for certain what will come to pass, regardless of our supposed foreknowledge. So you needn't worry for us. More importantly, that you should go to such great lengths as to travel unto the past bespeaks the gravity of your quest. Will you not reveal it to us? Mayhap we can be of aid to your cause. <sighs> if this is true, then you've been keeping quite the secret to yourself. As a representative of the Convocation, I will hear it all. Your identity, purpose, everything. Why don't we move to a place more conducive to calm conversation? I've been working here for some days now at an old friend's behest. If it is agreeable, we may make use of my accommodation at Poiton Oikos. We were meant to meet. I am certain of it. Else I wouldn't have marked you so clearly and sent you unto myself in the past. It's precisely the sort of mischief I would get up to. I'm quite inspired, if I do say so myself. <laughs> oh, this is right here. Dad, it's not like Corker with a really, really big horn. What kind of creation this is that? Why did I just create something that's more simple? Oh, 
Oh, to the south. That's where north. Ha 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 ha. Silly me. But anyway, this may look more like a forest than a garden. Yeah, probably that's why I have a ton of dangerous creature in this area. Oh, this look dangerous. <laughs> Thank you. 
Start with I think I have all the curve. No. One more. To the doors. Wait a second. Nope, cannot go there. Well, at least now. Not going unable to go there yet. aroma. I feel more relaxed already. Wait. Oh, that's the answer from the uh, original Arim Reborn. The opening. Would that I had sweetmeats to offer, but I travel light out of habit. There's plenty of hot water though, so please have as much tea as you like. Now then, will you tell us your tale? That probably would suck them to the core. <laughs> Why don't you start from the beginning? Preposterous! Utterly preposterous! While not the words I would have chosen, I too have my doubts. Much of it borders on the incredulous. What of you, Vanar? Not knowing the precise details of the first final days, it is difficult to determine the veracity of the tale. Supposing it is all true, I must ask myself why I would do what I did. Why would I feel I had no recourse, 
but to oppose the Fourteen and create this Hydaelyn. Circumstances change, of course, but it would not have been an easy decision regardless. No, there must have been a reason. One compelling enough to force me to take such drastic measures. Then there is the Elpis flower, which I said would serve as a guide. That it's of import to your mission is plain, but your presence here leads me to believe that this place also holds significance. But what could it be? What are we meant to accomplish? Might it not be simply thus? In the future whence he came, the final days could not be averted. Mankind has no choice but to flee the star. By alerting us to that eventuality, perhaps you wish to pave the way for other futures. Theoretically speaking, it is a possibility. Yet if that were my primary objective, I see no reason to guide our friend to Elpis specifically. The capital and Amarot, or even my own home, would be more logical destinations. True, true. I note also that Hydaelyn did not specify a point in time to which she must return. By this, it may be inferred that it was not critical that we should meet. Alternately, she had reason to believe that our paths would converge, coincidental though it may seem. Hmm... This is quite a puzzle. And we do not have all the pieces. Hardly any. But we do have one immutable fact. If the final days are indeed as described, they will bring death to all that I hold dear. Yet despite being afforded long years of preparation, the only provisions I could make were... for flight. Nay, my first and foremost endeavor would be to find a way to forestall the coming doom. Given that even the Fourteen failed, mayhap you deemed it impossible. Nothing is impossible. This I have always believed. And if Heidelin is indeed me, she would believe the same. Listen to yourself. Are you seriously entertaining the notion that you are a messianic figure in some far-fetched tale? Well, I will not. I refuse to accept that our world could be undone by some unforeseen calamity. I also take offense to my portrayal as a megalomaniacal madman. <laughs> to sacrifice oneself for the star is a noble act, and I would hold those who gave themselves to this zodiac in the highest esteem. Yet... You claim I recreated Amarot and populated it with phantoms of our people? A bizarre indulgence that would be insulting to their memory. Worse still, I even invited you there. Literally invited my own downfall. Why would I do something so idiotic and inexplicable? Now... I will allow that the hypothetical task of restoring our world would be daunting in the extreme. The thought of having to bear such a burden for a thousand, thousand lives horrifies me. But I would never forsake my duty. I would never forsake my brethren. You do not know me. I've had my fill of your fiction. I will return to my duty, and you will not bother me again. Emmett Selk, wait!
You've seen much of Elpis already. If you have any observations to share, I should like to hear them. Hermes and his creation Meteon, you say? If Dynamis is the self-same energy as Akasha, as it likely seems, then those two may well be at the center of the calamity to come. This warrants further investigation. With that settled, it is time for action. The missing pieces of the puzzle are here, I'm certain of it. And when you find them, the picture my future self has painted will be complete, and you will have your answer. And suffice it to say, I will aid you in your quest. Selk is the man Azam described to me. We've not seen the last of him. Just, just suddenly appear. <laughs> but there's no fixture unlock quest. Haha. Uh
Ah. Oh, yeah, I forgot about the old fairy. Been centuries. How are they?
Ha 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 ha. Kind of jump. Over. Interesting.
Well, it sure is a lovely view. <sighs> a delightful breeze and a breathtaking view. What is it like in the future? Is the world still a beautiful place? Dark hidden places rife with danger. Those of an altogether different, but no less powerful sort of appeal. While we wait, will you not tell me about your adventures? Well, not the pretentious events which led you here, but the simple delights all your own. By learning about the future world, I may gain insight into future me's plans. But more than that, I have an interest simply as a fellow traveler. Short of going somewhere oneself, there's naught more stirring than hearing another's account. Incredible. <laughs> or that I could have been there to see it. <sighs> Yours is a harsh and unforgiving world. Yet in spite of this, your brethren hold fast to their virtue. To know that the light of mankind's potential still shines, even in that faraway place, it gives me heart. Thank you for regaling me with your tales. I will treasure every word. As you know, I was once a scholar. And among other things, I sought to understand the workings of the world. What exactly is ether? How formed the laws of nature? When sprung mankind? Riddles and mysteries beyond counting. Over the years, I have managed to find answers to some few of them. Yet rather than attain a sense of mastery, the more I understood, the more I came to hold the world and its miracles in awe. We too are miracles, each and every one of us, born of the warm breath of life that traverses the heavens, swirling through eternity. When I fully grasped the improbability of our existence, nothing felt impossible anymore. If it could be imagined, it could be done. A passion swelled within me, an epiphany dispelling all preconceptions of what was natural and true, and a presence without, immense yet intimate, Fate, perhaps, holding us in its tender embrace. As reassuring as it was intimidating, how keenly aware I became of creation's fragility, built as it is upon precarious happenstance. I was overcome with an irrepressible urge to know the world more intimately, to hear its voice, feel its breath. I ventured forth on a journey that very day, 
so very long ago now. Here for favorite bread, isn't this? I mean, it turned out to be here. The voice from Hydrogen, she say about feel, hear, think, something like that. Interesting. Freed from presumption and prejudice, I saw the world through a newborn's eyes. Everything fresh and new, and so, so beautiful. Lands that stretched on forever. Skies one could drown in. The heartbeat of nature, silent yet strong. And amidst it all a people. Beacons of light and life. Laughter that warmed my heart like naught else before. They are my meaning and my purpose. My love. And so long as they need help, I cannot return to the star. Perhaps my future self is still waiting for it. The moment she can let go and walk unto the end. Safe in the knowledge that man will find his own way. You, who are our future, Tell me this, and tell me true. Has your journey been good? Has it been worthwhile? Forgive my lateness. My observation subject was rather irritable, and it took a while to settle it down. No need to apologize. Your work takes precedence. Besides, we had a pleasant conversation in the meantime. You're too kind. Now then, I'm told you wished to ask me some questions. Indeed. I have an interest in one of Hermes' creations. Meteon, you witnessed a host of them take flight, yes? Oh, that! Yes, yes, I did. It was in the dark of the morn. I'd left the Thalassi after nocturnal observation. As I walked along, I spied a bright light climbing high into the southeastern skies. Then, in an instant, it was gone, like... A shooting star, only rising rather than falling. But then another shot up, then another, and another. Intrigued, I made my way to the edge to investigate. And who should I spy on an isle to the south but Hermes and Meteon, the Matea, rather? <laughs> the Matea. There were lots of them. And I realized they must be the shooting stars that I'd seen. A dazzling spectacle indeed. Have you spoken with Hermes about this? Oh, yes. The sight left such an impression on me that I approached him about his mystery project the very next day. Alas, he said that he couldn't reveal anything just yet, that he needed to conduct further tests. <laughs> it shouldn't be long now, though. He often returns to that isle, and I have a feeling he's nearing a breakthrough. Splendid. We are likewise eager for the details. Well, that is all we wish to ask. Thank you for taking the time to indulge our curiosity. You're very welcome. It's always a pleasure to speak with other inquisitive souls. Oh, and will you be descending now? If so, I shall link the doors for you. Please.
Okay, well, it's been five hours since I start the uh, live stream, and I'm getting really, really sleepy right now. So, well, look like I need to wrap up the stream for now. I mean, the live stream for now, uh, the live for now, and uh, return it another time and continue with this story so thank you for watching well if there is anyone there <laughs> and uh, hopefully we'll come back soon later for more of the story have a great day